video, I'm breaking down the most toxic offense in the game, bar none. I'm playing VA Dimes. If you guys don't know who he is, he's one of the best players in Madden every single year. And every year he has one of the most, if not the most toxic offenses in the game. Super frustrating to deal with. So he's coming out in bunch and he has the quad father. He has Lamar Jackson. He has the X Factor. He's lit up. And I'm screaming at him. I don't have time for this. He's coming out a bunch, but he's audibly into a lot of different formations, trips, uh, you know, all sorts of different trips. He's, you know, he's going to run RPOs at me. He's going to run read options at me. He's going to pass the ball. I don't really think he wants to stay in this bunch set. I think he's just coming out in it in order to get me to play bunch defense and then make me audible. So you guys can see I'm running the spinner. And he has some problems. Um, I got a few, you know, sacks on him to get him in third and long. He's able to get the pick. So perfect start. By the way, guys, if you want my offense and defensive schemes, check out my ebooks on SportsGamers.com. You can become a VIP member and get access to currently 11 ebooks, and we have also weekly tips, 100 plus for 24.99. So you're gonna get everything. Anyways, I'm on offense now. I'm running the Washington Commanders offense. And it looks like he's in big nickel over G, and he's showing blitz. So we're going to be able to attack that right here with verticals. I expected he thought I was going to run the ball. When I saw that safety come in the box, I figured I'd have to see him wide open if I could just make his user hesitate for one second. So back on defense. And once again, you guys can see he's just going from bunch to every formation in the game, it seems like. And he ran an, an RPO right there. I didn't have Smith manned up, and that actually is really smart by him because by default that player is not manned up against Spinner. I think he realizes I'm running Spinner, and you know I had to make a choice because you guys can see he has the quad father lit up. You know, do I st stay at home for the run or try to defend the bubble? And there he goes again with another RPO. He had a screen opposite it. This is going to be really, really annoying. I'm glad I got an early stop because this this offense is going to be toxic, guys. I can already tell. Um, this is going to be tough to deal with. And here now, he's keeping it on a read option with Lamar. So, timeout. Let's, let's, nah, he's trying to go fast. No, we're going to slow this down. We got to slow this down. We got to make sure that we go ahead and put our option defense on. Free YouTube content, I highly recommend checking out sportsgamers.com. This is where I post all my premium content for Madden 23. I have offensive and defensive ebooks, schemes, plus I do four to six premium tips every week in the Madden Vault to keep you guys ahead of the game. Our best offer yet is the Sports Gamers Madden VIP membership. This is the best Madden membership anywhere on the net, the best content at the best price. You get access to the entire site for only $24.99. This means all of our eBooks, all of our Madden Vault tips, plus you even get access to our meta reports and our exclusive VIP members only community. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well for you guys that are interested in that. See you at sportsgamers.com. If you're serious about winning more games, I will post a link in the description as well as in the comments. Conservative. I should have done that already, to be honest with you. When I saw who I was playing and that he had Lamar, I should have known better that this was coming. And here we go again. I mean, you know, RPOs. But see, see, the thing about this is, is because he's coming out of bunch, I have to defend bunch, right? I can't not defend bunch. I'm sure if I don't defend bunch, if I don't play bunch defense, he's just going to stay in bunch. But because he sees I'm in bunch defense, he's audibly into 5,000 different formations. And, woo, somebody, man, you get it. this is annoying. This is annoying. So, yeah, I mean, I can't just strictly set up for these RPOs because if so, he's just going to stay in bunch. So, here I'm going to go cover four. He audible. I think he wants to run the swing pass. So, we're going to take that away. Lurk the slant. Oh, uh, that was perfect defense. I, you know, right there when he audible to that formation, I knew that 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 probably bubble screen to the running back play was coming. So I audible to cover four, and I thought I'd be able to, you know, get the pick. You know, good D. And because we changed our offensive, I'm sorry, our option defense to conservative, I was able to get that, you know, option locked up. Now here's an obvious passing situation. Finally, we got him in fourth and seven. So now we're going to scream at him. You guys can see my adjustments here. I got a deep zone over the middle, um, and I'm just going to use her the kind of like the short middle area myself, take away whatever quick read he has, and he, was, he didn't block the blitz at all, and he got sacked. So, really good start to the game for us. We're back on offense now. This is a unique defense that he's running. His, like I said, VA Dimes is always known for running different things that are super annoying to deal with. And this defense, it looks like it's big nickel over G, like I said, cover two. I'm thinking he's bringing the safeties in the box. 
Um, he's probably using a package so he can kind of run an inverted cover three is my best guess. But this is not really that great of run defense, to be honest with you. A lot of this run that he's running is basically putting it on his user to stop me. And I have the quad father too. Hey, I, I mean, I have no shame in my game. We're going to make this work. So, you know, he hasn't really shown he can stop it yet. But we're going to go with a little pass here. A little dot in the seam. So he's blitzing me out of cover too. But he's making a lot of adjustments. He gave up the seam right there. I went vertical so that he would have to defend a lot of space over the middle with the quick throws. And he just wasn't able to. All right, so first down, you know, I figured he'd be blitzing me because I keep running the ball, right? So I went with a quick wheel route to the running back out of the backfield, and we just dropped the ball. You know, kind of unfortunate break right there. I feel like we had taken a step or two. That KO shouldn't have activated, in my opinion. It is what it is. We're in third down now. Um, I'm going back to tight because I liked the look I had the previous play. Uh, when I passed the ball, we're going to the same exact play. See what he, he's going to take my slant, so I had the post, high ball, drop the ball. Probably needed to wait a split second longer to throw that. You know, we'll take it. We'll take the 10-point lead. I mean, he got ball first. I'm up 10. You know, he has a toxic offense. Um, you know, we'll de we're, we're happy with that. We're definitely happy with that. So he, he's back in the bunch here. This is the first time he actually handed the ball off from bunch. So like I said... If I don't pay attention to bunch, it's not like he can't stay in bunch, pass the ball, run the ball. You know what I mean? So we're going to have to be on that a little bit better. Again, I'm thinking this is probably going to be the screen or the RPO, which is why I manned him up. But the guy I manned him up with got caught up on the run action. He won juke and he's gone. Like this offense is so annoying. He's playing a really smart game right now. Because what he's doing is he's, again, he's making me defend bunch. He knows that, you know, to defend bunch, you kind of have to run dollar or like 3-3. Three, three. And, you know, man-to-man, -man, man blitzes, right? And he's audibly in two formations that just completely misalign dollar. And then he's running RPOs, read options, and it's just a nightmare right now. Because he has, the thing that's making this really hard is he has the quad father. So I can't, you know, I have to defend the run super hard too. And it's just a nightmare. So second down here, we have a little hitch, another knockout. Eh, that's the second time that's happened to me. Whatever. Third down, I'm thinking quick pass to flat. Again, he's in cover two, but a lot of times it seems like he's showing blitz so he can make his cover two and inverted cover three and blitz out of it. And technically, he could blitz me from either side because he has someone in the box on both sides. Now, here, I'm going to see if I can't hit him with corner out. But again, that inverted cover three did a really good job with defending that. I tried to do it on the wide side. Normally, I do that on the short side. That was great defense. So I just threw that away. Um, here I'm thinking I can hit him with the flat and make him respect the middle of his user on the Texas route. I had the out route wide open first down. So I'm kind of getting a feel for what his adjustments are in his coverage. This is actually really kind of high level defense he's playing. I don't really like Big Nickel over G personally, but he's doing a lot out of it um, to make it pretty, pretty solid D. Like it's not like this is not a meta defense. It's not something I've seen before. Um, so I'm kind of having to adjust on the fly here. You know, he's still kind of, honestly, one thing I'll say is this is, like I said, not the best run D. Um, a lot of it is on his user. And especially when that safety's not in the box on the left side away from the nickelback. Um, it's kind of pretty bad against the run. So we're going to keep on running, honestly. We're going to take advantage of the quad father, too. So, again, look, if he doesn't make a user play, I feel like I have five yards minimum every time. And I don't even have the best run stick, right? I like to pass the ball. But at the same time, if he's going to give us the run, we're going to take it. So here I'm thinking, again, going back to the quick pass out of the backfield. Uh, that time he defended it pretty good. But, I mean, still, the thing about that pass is even when it's defended well, you know, unless they got literally a zero-yard flat, you're still going to get two or three yards. So I put myself in a situation where I feel comfortable running the ball here. Honestly, what I'm trying to do is just make sure this is the last possession of the half because I get the ball at half. And I don't like, I'm not really enjoying playing against his offensive scheme. It's driving me crazy, to be quite honest with you. You know, it's giving me gray hairs. I don't want to deal with that. So I want the ball now, in the half, get the ball after half. And if I can score on both possessions, then I feel like it's going to open things up for me um, to where he's not going to be able to just run this, all these random RPOs and run plays. He's going to actually have to pass more, and I like my chances to stop him. So here I notice he's still sticking with those flats on the outside. I think I can get a corner out over the top. Um, I'm kind of doing a short side street corner and then a wide side. I'm motioning him out so I can hit the corner out potentially on both sides. And I was actually right. 
I noticed that the play before, when I hit the running back on the out route out of the backfield, I was like, ugh, I really missed the corner route, so I kind of went right back to it and he gave it to me again. Now here I'm like, okay, if I want to run an RPO, I should do it to the wide side, but I don't have enough time to do all that. So actually, let's see if I can hit a corner around the back of the end zone. Maybe he'll shade his coverage for hard flat, and he actually does, but I just get the worst animation ever. Now here I'm going to go right back. I'm going to try to run an RPO, but to the wide side. I just feel like with the way his defense looks, he just doesn't have the numbers to defend this, right? I feel like this is a good call. I should have one-on-one. -on -one. And even if I do get tackled, I do have a timeout. So we're kind of taking a chance here. But, you know, exactly kind of what I expected to happen did. I was one-on-one. -on -one and, hey, sometimes, you know, you just got to let your players go to work. So that was perfect. I'm up 10. I get ball a half. So at this point, I'm thinking, all right, just get some points here. We're in a great spot. <sighs> I, I was thinking maybe he would keep his cloud flat and I could get behind it. But he didn't. That was really good defense. I just had to throw the ball away. There was honestly nothing there. So now I'm going to try to hit him over the middle of the field. And again, high ball, but, you know, he breaks it up. Pretty good defense right there. And this drive has started off really bad. Now I'm on fourth down and I haven't even taken any time off the clock. He screams at me here. I have to get rid of this. And I just threw an absolute laser. <laughs> I threw that right. That was a really tough throw. I threw that right, literally right on the cut. That was like this close to getting broken up but I mean honestly he was screaming at me he played good D he forced a quick throw I just made a better read that could have been broken up though um that was a really tight window so at this point I'm like okay we gotta take some time off the clock here we gotta at least make sure that this drive gets some sort of points and take some sort of time off the clock because that first uh series of downs was kind of rough not gonna lie I don't know what happened the third down the third down just seemed to disappear but hey you know I've seen a lot in this year's Madden. I don't know, maybe it, the play just didn't show up. Um, but this is a game I played a few days ago. I'm going back, breaking it down for you guys. Um, anyway, so one thing I've noticed is he's giving the seam up, especially when I'm in his trips because he thinks I'm running. <laughs> and he just did a couple man-ups. And literally, perfect play call. I kind of knew that that was going to happen based upon his adjustments I was seeing. And even when I run the ball, I'm seeing guys manned up running to people. So I knew he was kind of going to do that, and it worked perfectly for me. He had to use with that, but there was just no way he could, given where he was lined up. And he even hesitated a bit more, which made it easy. We get on the goal line, we run a fullback dive. We're up 24-7, to but the thing about this is, is this dude's offense is so annoying to deal with, we're not, we can't slack. But I will say, because I'm up 17 now, I'm changing my strategy. I'm no longer all out blitzing him. I'm just going to play dollar man. Shade underneath with safeties over top and make him work. I don't care if he gets points, but I just don't want any big plays. I don't want any more of those bubble screens and read options taking off for 30, you know, RPOs taking off for 30 million yards. You know what I mean? We can't have that. So, you see how smart this guy is? He recognizes I'm trying to run a loop blitz now, shaded underneath coverage, but I'm not blitzing as heavily. So, look what he's doing. He's running play action because that's one of the easiest ways to counter just these four-man loops. Huh, so this is a really smart player right here for a really frustrating offense. It seems like everything I go to, he has something annoying to make me. And obviously I can tell that he knows other ways to block this. He's running bubble screens, basically, um, <laughs> um, to you know swing passes, RPOs. He's running everything you can do. And the rare occasion he does do a normal pass, I haven't even seen it yet. That was the first time I've seen a normal pass play. I feel all game. What do you know? We get the sack. I do have a feeling that this guy has a better way to block that than he just showed if he's doing normal passes, but I guess we'll find out. I'm expecting him to run play action again because he just always does from this formation, so I'm going to audible the spinner here. I need more pressure, and I'm just going to lurk the middle myself. I'm going to contain because that should allow the pressure to come, and you know we get, we get a, a break up. We get a knockout from Crow. So third and 17, I'm just thinking, okay, like don't give up the first down here. You know, we've done a really good job this drive switching things up on him. Because this offense is, like, it was literally giving me a headache in the first half. And I don't know what I'm doing here. That was all on me. That's what I need to be using. I just, honestly, I did not expect that to get that open. I thought that my DB would clamp down on that a little bit better than he did. But really good play by him. So this time, I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to take a guess here that he's going to try to attack me in the seam. So I'm going to put an inside third out by my safety. And, I mean, I'm just... 
Perfect play call. I did an inside throw to my safety to take away the seam, and he runs a corner out to his tight end on the side I didn't have the deep half. Like, that was just a great play call. I mean, I can't can't say anything about that. And now, you know, we got to move. You know, we got to at least put a drive together to kind of kill this clock, make something happen, make him burn some time out, something. And as you guys have kind of seen throughout this game, like, this run D is not good that he's using, and he just will not get out of it. I'm going to literally go back to the same passing play I just ran to kill them because I don't think he can stop this, especially when he I feel like he's thinking I'm going to run the ball. And what do you know? Same thing. He did try to additionally man that guy up with somebody else this time, but he's just not fast enough. I high-balled it over his head this time, and that was a touchdown. So at this point, I'm like, all right. like That last drive, he really had to work. Um, honestly, I feel he got a little fortunate uh, to get any points. So we're going right back to the same strategy, especially given the fact that you know there's even less time now. And I feel like now he's actually staying in bunch because he, he needs to just – he doesn't really have time for all the cute little bubblegum plays anymore. All the bubblegum, you know, got chewed up. <laughs> so now he's going to actually have to legit pass, which he hasn't really shown too much legit passing plays this game, only a couple – I saw the corner out. I just usered it. I jumped it. Um, and that's pretty much that. I hope y'all enjoyed this game, man. It was a great game. Great opponent. Great little scheme he has. If y'all did, make sure to smash that like button. Until next time, it's Duke. And I'm out of here.